N8 to N barely needs any introduction. It's one of the most popular workflow engines at the moment, especially in the AI era. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can monitor and observe N8N using Dynatrace. Let's get to it. The first thing you're going to need is a Dynatrace tenant or a Dynatrace account. So head on over to Dynatrace.com and sign up for a free trial if you don't already have one. The next thing you'll need to do is take a note of your tenant or environment ID. In my case, it's HCI34192. The next thing you'll need is an access token. So press Control or Command and K and search for access tokens. And create a new access token that has ingest logs and ingest metrics permissions. Make a note of your token because you're not going to be able to see it again after this. And now head on over to the Dynatrace Perf Clinics repository that we've put in the video description below and download two files. Go to Dynatrace Getting Started Dashboards N8N and then download the N8N Overview.json and the N8N Page Performance Overview.json. These are two uh, Dynatrace dashboards that we are now going to upload to the tenant. So save those to your computer. Go back to Dynatrace, press Ctrl K again and search for dashboards. And up at the top left here, you'll see an upload button. Click upload and go ahead and upload those two dashboards. So you should now have two empty dashboards at N8N overview. Obviously nothing is set up yet, so it's empty. And the page performance overview should also be empty. Next, head on over to the N8N IO, N8N hosting, GitHub, and Git clone that repository or otherwise download the zip file and extract the zip file because we'll need these files to start up N8N. Now again, we provide all of the sample code, but if you're following the N8N quick start guide, you'll notice it asks you to create a .env file, and we need to make some changes to that because by default, N8N doesn't come enabled with some of the features that we need, particularly uh, the Prometheus endpoint that we need to scrape. So again, have a look in the video description, but these are the changes we're going to make. Same as always, we're going to set a Postgres user and password and the database name uh, and the non-root user and password. But this time, we'll also enable the metrics endpoint and we'll enable some of uh, the additional metrics that will help us to get visibility into what N8N is doing. So let's set all of this to true. And then down the bottom here, we need to formulate our environment URL. So it's HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash, and then replace ABC12345 with your environment ID dot live dot Dynatrace dot com. And then create another environment variable called DT underscore API underscore token. And that's the token that you created in step one. So to recap, by now you should have a Dynatrace tenant, you should have created a token with ingest logs and ingest metrics, and you should have cloned two repositories, um, this one for all of your sample code and your the N8N hosting. You should also have downloaded two Dynatrace dashboards and uploaded them to your tenant. So if you're at this point, we're ready to proceed. The next thing you'll need to do is define a open telemetry collector config.yaml. Again, there is the, the sample uh, in the Perf Clinics repository in the video description below. But basically, this allows us to both scrape the Prometheus metrics from N8N and monitor the N8N log files. We use the cumulative to delta processor because Dynatrace supports delta metrics, not cumulative. And then we're going to export them to Dynatrace, as you can see here. You can leave this file as it is because, as you can tell, they're all environment variables, which we'll populate in a moment. The next thing you need to do is take the default Docker Compose that N8N give us and actually add a section to that because what we need to do is add an open telemetry collector to our stack. It's the open telemetry collector that's going to look at those logs and those metrics that you've just seen and push them into Dynatrace. So add this section at the bottom here. Again, there is a template in the Dynatrace repository. 
And if you have all of that configured, we are ready to start up N8N. So change directory into the Docker Compose with Postgres, that's from the N8N repository, and simply do Docker Compose up. And if everything goes well, you should see some output that looks like this, um, but N8N is running on the default port of 5678. So head across to your browser and go to localhost colon 5678. And here we are, N8N has started. So let's just create a fake account, admin at example.com, Adam Gardner, some sort of password. Yeah. Yeah, get started and then skip all of this stuff. Okay, N8N is running. It's now time to create some initial workflows. So go up here to create workflow. And again, we've already uh, configured two demo workflows, one that is going to run successfully and one that is deliberately going to fail. So head on over to the Dynatrace repository again, if you haven't cloned this already. And in the N8N workflows, you should see two scheduled workflow and failing workflow. So go ahead and download both of those two JSON files to your computer, and then upload each of those as workflows. So I'm going to uh, rename my workflow to scheduled workflow and go to the three little dots up here at the top right and go to import from file. So I've renamed my workflow uh, in the UI to scheduled workflow and I'll obviously pick the corresponding scheduled workflow JSON file. And now make sure this inactive toggle is set to active. So if you just click that, it'll say workflow activated. Yeah, got it. And go back to personal and do the same thing again. Create workflow, uh, failing workflow. Three little dots, go to import from file and upload the failing workflow and toggle that one to active. And then if you head back to personal, you should now have two workflows, both of which are active. And that's it. Basically, the scheduled workflow, if we double click and double click the schedule trigger, runs every minute. And the failing workflow runs every five minutes. So let's head over into Dynatrace, give it a five minutes or so, and we'll see what we start to get. So immediately, I don't even need to wait five minutes, I can head into Dynatrace and look at the N8N overview dashboard and you'll see some audit logs here, um, a created and an updated for each workflow. You see the user ID, the email, the first name, obviously it's me, and the workflow name along the end here. So what we've got here is a pair of created and updated. Created when I initially created each workflow, one for each, and then updated when I actually toggled it from inactive to active. So you get a created event and an updated event. And now it's a waiting game. Let's just wait for our workflows to run. I've had one workflow started and one workflow successfully executed. And you can see that in two places. One is just a big number here. And the other is obviously this bar chart that's going to keep growing. On the right hand side here, you see a log of your workflow execution. So you've got the execution ID, the status, which of course, we know this one's successful. Scrolling across here, we don't have any error message, of course, because it was successful. The execution time of the workflow, that's very important, because if your workflows start to slow down, you want to know that. So this one took five seconds, and we get this blue hyperlink looking thing, which actually is a hyperlink. So if we click this while the dashboard refreshes, by the way, I've got this set to a refresh interval up here of one minute. You can pick whatever you like, even turn it off and then just use the manual um, refresh. Anyway, back to what I was saying for the workflow. If I click this, it will jump you straight into the execution log in N8N for that particular workflow. And similarly, now that I've got a failed workflow here. I can jump straight into the failing workflow to see what's going on uh, in N8N with that workflow. 
Now, one note about this, just to explain how this works, um, I have created a variable that by default points to localhost 5678 for demos, but if your N8N runs at a different URL, the dashboard will work with that perfectly as well. What you need to do though, is go into the settings, a little cog up here, go to variables, and then change the N8N root URL. So if you just click that, it's free text. Uh, so just set your N8N URL to wherever, you know, the domain name that you hosted it at, and the dashboard will then work perfectly. The hyperlinks basically look at that variable and build the hyperlink based on this variable. So it's not hard coded to localhost, but it will work by default for a demo. Just to quickly show you the page performance overview, whereas the N8N overview is an overview of your workloads, this page and this graph is an overview of the performance of N8N itself. And you can see we're pulling each of the um, statistics for every single REST endpoint, every single page in N8N. So you can really see how N8N itself is working. And there you go, that's how you can monitor and observe N8N using Dynatrace. All of the links, all of the files, everything you need is in the video description below. Enjoy. See you next time. Bye.